everybody. My name's Alby, and today we're going to be baking with Burb. I've got all of my ingredients set up over here on the table. And we're going to be making brownies. What we'll need for this recipe is all-purpose flour, sugar, which I have in my own jar here, salt. If you have baking paper, you can use that to line your baking pan. Um, however, I don't have any, so I'm going to be using Baker's Joy Spray, which is essentially just flour in a can. Makes it easier to get the brownies out. You'll need a thick and a half of butter. Two eggs. Vanilla. powder. And the recipe that I'm using calls for some high quality chocolate. However, I found Andy's mints and I'm going to substitute those because I like mint. To get started, we're going to turn our oven to bake and we're going to set it at 350 degrees. First, you want to melt your butter. I've gone ahead and put it in this cup that I can put in the microwave, and we're going to set it in there for small amounts of time. Um, we'll check on it, and then we'll put it back in. If you put it in for too long, you'll cook it, and really you just want it to melt. Another 
here we're starting to get that soupy consistency that we're looking for. Nice and melted. Our next task is to go ahead and get the sugar and put that into our mixing bowl. The recipe calls for one and one-fourth cup of sugar. Now you just want the regular granulated sugar for this. Don't use powdered sugar or anything. I'm not really sure how that would make the brownies turn out. Throw it together in here, but it's not a measuring scoop, so that needs to come out. Having some technical difficulties with my big fat paws. This is not the kind of scoop that you want to use. We're going to use measuring scoops instead. So, one cup. As even as possible. of a cup. It loses this red one here. There we go. Put the scoop back in there. And put that back where it belongs. So now we've got our sugar in our mixing bowl. You can whisk this by hand if you'd like, but I'm going to use a handheld mixer that plugs into the wall because mixing by hand takes a while. That doesn't sound good. I think one of these did not pop in correctly. Let's eject them. And we'll put them in again. This one. Put it on this side. And this one on the other side. Well, they're still hitting a little bit, but I think it'll be all right. We're going to do this on a low speed just to get started. Really, we just want it to be mixed up so that we can add the other ingredients. All that good. And now we're going to go get our
our eggs. So if I were to crack my eggs into a separate bowl, I'd like to do that that way if there's any eggshells, I can pick them out before they make it into the brownie batter. So we'll go ahead, pour those in. And get back to beating. Now you want to do this on a light setting. You don't want to beat the eggs too much. What should happen is that your batter here will become sort of lighter and fluffier. And you want to make sure that you get it mixed up well, but you don't want to overbeat it either. If you're beating without using the electric mixer, um, you're probably going to have to mix it for a minute or two, but I have the electric mixer so things are going a lot faster. Now we get to add the dry ingredients. Whoops, almost forgot something. We still have to add in our vanilla, which you know, is a liquid ingredient, so we want to do all of those first. It's going to be two teaspoons of vanilla. I'll pour that in and get that mixed, and then we'll skip ahead to the dry. For the dry ingredients, you're going to want to get a sifter. It'll make sure to get all the lumps out for you. What we're adding is three-fourths of a cup of all-purpose flour, one-fourth of a cup of cocoa powder, teaspoon of salt. Go ahead and pop that around a little bit. We'll get all of that into our batter. should have a little extra sort of bobbing around in your sifter there. But totally normal. That's what you want. So for this part, you don't want to use your electric mixer. You want to fold the dry ingredients into the wet ones. So I'm going to unplug my mixer here and move it out of the way since we no longer need it. using this thingy. I don't really know what it's called, but it's kind of kind of specialist. I got some dry ingredients on the uh, little bit of flour missed the bowl, but it's okay. I've got a very soupy mixture here. little while to mix it in. It'll kind of seem like the uh, dry ingredients are just sitting on top of the wet ones and you're gonna think to yourself oh no it's not mixing but it is so don't worry just keep at it. There we go now we're getting it. It's starting to turn into a nice thick chocolate putty. The 
people was getting away from my paws. And you want to mix it up so that it's nice and thick, but don't mix it too much. If you just overmix, overmix, it'll kind of make the, uh, the brownie batter turn more into like a cake batter and you'll get more cakey brownies. So now that everything's mixed up, the original recipe that I followed was supposed to be for fudgy chocolate brownies. Um, I mean, these are obviously chocolate, but I'm not following the recipe exactly. They wanted you to melt uh, four ounces of chocolate and put it into the brownies and then also take chocolate chunks later and mix them in. And the brownies were really good, but they were almost too sweet. So I really want to try it with mint first off, but instead of melting half the mint in and then adding chunks in, I'm just going to go ahead and add the chunks. See if that makes it slightly less sweet because really you ate like two brownies and you wanted more but you it was just it was almost too much um i don't have a way to measure out um exactly how much i'm using the original recipe counted uh for eight ounces um i'm just gonna dump some chunks in i, I really don't think that you can go wrong with andy's mints we're just going to pour a bunch and we're going to have really really minty brownies and I think that's going to be perfectly okay so we're going to go ahead and fold those in so that they're all nice and dispersed throughout the batter There we go. Now to get our pan ready. So what I'll be using is this small square baking pan. Um, it's a 22.9 by 22.9 by 5.08 centimeters, if that means anything. Um, but I'm just going to call it a brownie pan, because that's what I'm using it for. And I'll be spraying it with my Baker's Joy to make sure that my brownies come out non-stick, and then we're going to pour our brownie batter in there. So we've got our pan all nice and greased up, and we're going to go ahead and get the brownie mix in. And you basically just pour it right into the pan. Having trouble with my paws. So, once you've got your brownie batter in the pan, it's time to put it in the oven. I like to use oven mitts even when I'm putting stuff in. Um, my wife makes fun of me because you're just putting it into the oven. It's not even hot yet, but the inside of the oven is already hot. It's been preheated. It's been heating up this entire time while we've been making brownies and I don't want to burn my little paws. So I'm going to go ahead and use an oven mitt to get it in. So we're going to let that bake for about 20 to 25 minutes 
Um, the brownies that I did before with the original recipe, I cooked for 25. Um, that worked really well with our stove anyway. Um, you do have to be careful, since we put chocolate chunks in there, they are going to melt. Um, when you go to do the stick test with the toothpick, you might get some chocolate back on it, and it's going to look like it's not cooked all the way through. So poke it in a different couple different spots just to check. Um, you know, if you get back full chocolate, you may have just had a chocolate chunk. Um, it might not actually be the brownie batter. Well, the timer just went off, so let's see how our brownies look. Look like brownies to me. Mmm, brownies. We'll do a quick toothpick test just to make sure that they're cooked all the way through, and if not, we can throw them in for a couple more minutes. Toothpicks. Just need one. So, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of brown on my toothpick, which under normal circumstances, I'd be a little worried that maybe it wasn't cooked all the way through. However, the last batch we cooked for 25 minutes, I know settled just fine. Um, so that's the time that's good for my oven. And given that we've put chocolate in there, which is going to melt, I'm assuming that that's probably the chocolate, um, especially since it only came out on one side of the toothpick and not the other. I probably just hit a little chocolate chunk. So, the next important thing to do is just to let it cool, and then you can cut and enjoy. Thanks for baking with Barb.